In this video we're going to look at the balancing act that is maintaining homeostasis. We're going to look at the main components in maintaining homeostasis, including detecting change and counteracting change. And we're going to look at the role of the nervous system in controlling and linking this detecting and counteracting change, as well as putting it all together into what we refer to as a feedback loop. So but firstly, the basic concept of maintaining homeostasis is that the body needs to firstly detect a change from the normal state and then do something that counteracts this change and restores the normal state. So if you think about homeostasis as driving down a road, you want to stay in the centre of the road. Uh, if you veer too much to the left or you're too far to the left side, you recognise that you're on the left side and correct your steering wheel to the right to bring you back to the centre. Same thing, if you veer too much to the right, you correct this, you d detect that change by seeing it, and then you counteract this by steering to the left and moving back to the centre. The same way uh, homeostasis occurs within the body, detecting and counteracting the change. So the first thing the body does is detect the change, and it detects the change through specialised cells called receptors. And when we talk about the change, we're talking about any movement from the normal state that will provoke these receptors and they are together called stimuli. Now there's a few different types of receptors in the body. For example, mechanoreceptors uh, for touch, sound, pressure, so moving things. Uh, thermoreceptors detect temperature. Photoreceptors detect light, uh, including colour and different strengths of light. And then we have chemoreceptors, which detect concentrations of different chemicals, for example, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, pH, glucose, and waste products such as nitrogen in the blood. Once we've detected the change, we then need to counteract this change. And the thing that counteracts the change in our bodies are referred to as effectors. And that could be muscles which move to produce a particular response, or a gland that secretes some sort of hormone to again elicit some sort of response, which brings the stimuli back, or counteracts the stimuli, bringing it back to normality or the status quo. Now this detecting and responding to stimuli is controlled in control centres, and those control centres are found in the central nervous system. So some common control centres are the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland and the medulla, which are all found in the brain. And these organise and control the stimulus response pathway, so that detecting change and responding to change. The role of the peripheral nervous system is to link all the different components of the stimulus response pathway together and to communicate messages between them. And it does this through electrochemical signals, which are transmitted along the surface of nerves uh, that move all around the body, that will move the information all around the body. Now we can represent this whole process, the stimulus response pathway, uh, in what we refer to as a feedback loop, which is a diagrammatic representation. So firstly, we start at the normal state. So this might be normal body temperature, it might be normal pH, uh, normal glucose concentration, any uh, function that is maintained through homeostasis. We then have this stimulus, so a movement from the normal state, be it up or down. The receptor, which detects the stimulus. The receptor then sends a message along the peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system where the control centre is found. The control centre makes some sort of decision on how it's going to deal with this stimulus. It then again sends that from the central nervous system to the peripheral nervous system to the effector and the effector counteracts that stimulus some way and we refer to this as the response. And hopefully this response will return back to the normal state. Most homeostatic functions have both a positive and negative 
response to a stimulus. So if the stimulus increases or decreases, there is a similar yet different response. An example of a process that is regulated by homeostasis is thermoregulation, maintaining the body temperature at around 37, 37 and a half degrees. If the body temperature increases, so say it's a hot day and the body temperature increases, that's the stimulus. The receptors, the thermoreceptors, detect that the body temperature has increased and they send the message along the nerves to the control center, which is the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus then decides what it's going to do and says, well, yep, no, it's getting a bit hot. I probably better do something. Uh, so it sends a message to the effector, which in this case are the sweat glands, which perspire. That perspiration produces the response of lowering body temperature through evaporative cooling. And that lowering body temperature brings us back to the normal state or the status quo. So as I said, there are similar yet opposite uh, feedback loops. So for example, with thermoregulation, we've got the opposite happening with the stimulus being that there's a drop in body temperature. So the body gets too cold. Again, the same receptors, the thermoreceptors, pick up that the body is too cold. They send this message to the control center, being still the hypothalamus. However, the hypothalamus has received different stimulus here, so it's going to have a different response. So this time it's going to send a message to the effectors, which are the muscles, and cause them to start contracting and sh what we call shivering. And this shivering uh, makes heat energy uh, out of chemical energy, which causes a raise in body temperature and a return to the steady state at 37 degrees Celsius. So this is what we refer to as a positive and negative feedback loop. So we've got the positive, the raise in body temperature and how that is dealt with, and the negative, the decrease in body temperature and how that is dealt with. And you can see that once we put it all together, it looks a bit like a figure of eight. In this video, we've looked at the two steps in maintaining homeostasis, detecting change, which is done by the receptors, and counteracting change, which is done by the effectors. And we've looked at how the nervous system controls in the control centers, in the central nervous system, uh, this stimulus response pathway. And the peripheral nervous system joins all the components of the stimulus response pathway together. And we've looked at representing this diagrammatically in a feedback loop, as well as the feedback loop with the positive and negative uh, feedback being the figure of eight that we just did.